So let's say that your friend comes up to you with a business proposal. They wanna sell you an apple tree. Now this is awfully convenient because you've been thinking about quitting your job to sell apples full time. The way you would assess what to pay for the apple tree is a tool called valuation. In this video, we'll go over the principles of valuation as well as a simple discounted cash flow. These are the absolute essentials you should be familiar with as you're preparing for interviews in finance. So valuation is the process of determining how much an asset is worth. Almost all of what investing is, is trying to find and buy assets below what you believe that price is. The same methods that are used to value assets are used to value companies. And an apple tree is an asset, so let's start with that example. So what's in the value of a company or an asset? Oftentimes, you can distill it into the value of all the products and services that it will sell over time. So let's say that a unit of apple sells for $10. An apple tree, as with many assets, has a finite period of life. So let's say this apple tree will live for 10 years. So $10 per unit multiplied by 10 years, that gives us a maximum value of $100. But here's the catch. The apples that you think you might sell down in the future, years from now, are not guaranteed. In this example, the potential life of a tree is 10 years, but there's no guarantee that those apples eight or nine years from now will be of the same quality, that the consumers will still be around to buy them, that the tree will be in good health. The longer time goes on, the more risk there is to our investment. I wanna to stress to you that this is the maximum value. If there's $100 worth of apples being produced from this tree, that's the maximum amount you can pay for it. The more time that your money is deployed into an investment, the more return you need and that you deserve. If you were to buy this tree for $100, that's $100 you can't spend on stocks or bonds or even holding it in cash. The key valuation methodology we're touching on here is the discounted cash flow, which says that the value of an asset is equal to all of the cash flow that the asset will generate in the future. It's important to know that we are concerned with the price of an asset today. So we'll look at all of the future value of the cash flows we're generating, but we want to know the price at this very moment. This is the sentence that you should memorize as you're walking into your finance interviews. You gotta remember that DCF values an asset as the sum of the present value of all the future cash flows. There are three key variables when you're doing a DCF. The first is the size of the cash flows. How much can you sell each of those apples for? In our example, it's $10. The next is the timing of the cash flows. The further out the cash flow is, the less valuable it is to us. The third component is what's known as the discount rate. This is the rate we need to compensate us for that risk. This is the difference between that $100 maximum value and what we're actually willing to pay. The mechanics of the discount rate are super important in school, but in real life, most people just use about 10% and then apply a margin of error by calculating lots of sensitivities. That means we're calculating how much money this entire asset is gonna generate over the course of its life, and I'll show you how to do it with discounting. Let's walk through a very simple DCF. So if we're thinking about the apple tree, we said it lives for 10 years, and each year we receive $10 of cash flow. The further we go out in time, the smaller the cash flow will be. 10 years from now, a cash flow of $10 is only gonna be worth about $3.90. Within the discount factor formula is the concept of compounding. An annual rate of return is gonna compound at the same rate year over year. Discounting is essentially the inverse of compounding. The only formula you need to remember is one plus the discount rate to the power of negative N, where N is the amount of time that's elapsed. The main takeaway here is that future cash flows are worth less. Finally, we sum up all of the cash flows every single year to get a present value of $61. So if I'm buying an apple tree today, then I'm willing to pay $61 if my discount rate is 10%. I'll note that the math relationship here is that as the discount rate goes up, that means you demand more compensation for the risk you're taking on. That means the present value is lower. If the discount rate is lower, the current value is higher. Now let's walk through an actual DCF template. I wanna to stress to you that when you're modeling, it's much more important to be clear and straightforward than overly complicated. When you're working, the actual assumptions and the operating model underlying it is gonna be more complex, but fundamentally the DCF is always going to be building to cash flow and discounting that back. So we start with revenue, the top line, in which we're just assuming growth of 12%, and we apply a 50% EBITDA margin. In between revenue and EBITDA, you would deduct out other expenses like SG&A and R&D. We then deduct cash taxes. This is a big simplification, but we're using 40% of EBITDA. And then we deduct the two other biggest cash outflows, which are capital expenditures and increase in working capital. Then we get to our proxy of cash flow. This is the actual cash that the business would be generating. Just like in the last example, we use a discount rate of 10%. And you can see how the future value of the cash flows are being shrunk to a greater degree. So the sum of the present value of each of these projected free cash flows is $287. 
So the last step we need to do is calculate the terminal value of the company. When you think of terminal value, you're at the end of the company's life. If you were to sell the apple tree 10 years from now after it's done producing apples, you might get some value from the wood in the tree or the land that it's on. That's why we've extended out this forecast by one year. The 11th year is gonna inform what we use for this exit multiple calculation. So we take a 10 times multiple and multiply that by the forecasted EBITDA next year of $174. We get to a terminal value of $1739, and then we apply a discount factor to get $671. We assume here that we're selling the company at the end of 10 years, so we can use the same discount factor as the 10 year cash flow. Now there's a lot of ways we can get fancier with the mechanics here, like using mid-year conventions and a more fulsome calculation for tax. But the takeaway that you should have is that we're trying to get to free cash flow. We then combine the terminal value and the projected free cash flow to get the present value of the asset as $958. If you're comfortable walking someone through a DCF, then you're probably ready for your interview. And if you can build a DCF from scratch, you're probably ready to be an analyst. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.